Another thing I wanted to discuss was this post that went semi-viral on a Berghain subreddit, which I thought was pretty interesting in terms of a debate and a conversation piece to bring up on the podcast that somebody posted on the Reddit that was in response to this article that's featured on RA, unfeasible for many artists, our exclusivity clauses causing local DJs more harm than good. We spoke to Nita Avi Aviance, sorry, Ariel Zatini, Ariel Zettina, um, Nix and more about how industry-wide practice impacts rising artists. And obviously the person's hot take here on Reddit was it'd be better for the scene if Berkheim would close because of its exclusivity clause, which is a crazy thing to say in the subreddit, but obviously it's going to get you loads of conversations going. And the person's remarks were as follows. As far as I know, Berkheim has an exclusivity clause for DJs for two months before and after the Friday night gigs, or the, sorry, the club night gigs. Additionally, I find this problematic if you consider Berkheim is mostly run by white cis dudes. There are many smaller BIPOC queer trans flinter, I don't even know what that is, DJs promoters in the city trying to make ends meet. Um, and the, uh, as well as you know, techno is not um, created by white cis dudes. So my take is this, I love Berkheim, but for smaller DJs and promoters, it would be better if it would close. Bergan's having too much power and uses it not in a nice and egotistic way, basically doing only what they can do to stay in their quasi mono Holistic and power position. Furthermore, it sets a bad example towards other clubs and promoters. It would, if it would close, it would help smaller DJs and promoters. Furthermore, it would diversify the club spaces as other venues would benefit. The scene would spread again more amongst um, what what would spread again more amongst different places and give new peeps new chances. If you like it, discuss. There is some level of there is some truth in what this person's saying. It would be nice if this exclusivity thing was kind of eradicated. I think nowadays it doesn't really make much sense. I don't think so. Because I think maybe in the past, if there was a dearth, dearth of promoters or maybe the opportunity and the means to get artists to fly over, to come and play in your town, wasn't necessarily so readily available with cheap flights and other bits of transport or maybe if the industry or the community or the market or whatever you call it wasn't as big as it is nowadays right with people saying the nightlife economy is like in the billions in terms of how much money it kind of generates that would make a lot more sense i guess the advantage for it if you're the promoter be that if you're the person that's fronting the cost so you're the one paying for the flights and the accommodation that you don't get other people basically eating off of your plate by their and just waiting for you to book the big person and then booking them after kind of you know bearing the brunt of it mostly with the cost taking all the risk and then they're able to kind of also you know extract some value from that situation by booking the person after the fact so i get it but nowadays given the options that are available given the scale and the level of people that are available it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to have exclusivity deals especially if the exclusivity deals are affecting regular djs like no one that's like super famous and people who are just like you know on the come up or maybe they're like you know on the cusp of becoming popular but people that clearly need to play in more places before they get to the level where you can say they're like super super famous and that's the issue at hand and this article here from stop the wax that was published i think a few months ago that says exclusivity contracts are holding back local music scenes really speaks on it there's a lady here who speaks on it who says the following she says berlin artist johanna nutson i think that's how you pronounce it remembers during her first year djing in berlin one club leveraged an exclusivity clause and that forbade her to play anywhere else in the city for three months before the show with an extra week to call off afterwards super hard for me at the time as i hadn't yet started to play outside of berlin even though the gig was great it completely ruined my financial situation over the those few months since playing was my only income that went on for a few years when i eventually started touring it didn't really matter anymore but now it feels absurd to think that basically i had to save money to be able to say yes to these shows so it's a double-edged problem on one side it could only really affect you if you're somebody that only plays in your own city or don't like to travel but then if you're building up your name you're probably not going to be playing in many places outside your city anyway in the first place so having an exclusivity deal in your own city is flipping insane because it's going to limit your ability to make money after the gig that you played which is pretty wild it should only affect you if you go to play in, out in other places to be completely honest going back to this article that kind of speaks on it in general and going back to this point this person raised around the Bergheim thing we're probably in a far better place in terms of DJs in terms of a variety and range I think if you are somebody who is ideologically possessed and cares about work things like having 
quotas of who plays male or female what he identify is in terms of sexual orientation i think we're in the best time period ever for that thing because i feel like nowadays bigger clubs are more accepting of having djs from that community of people whether you're epoch bpoc queer trans lgbtq whatever flinter is you get more chances to play now than you ever did prior in my personal opinion i think it's a, probably the best time ever for the quote-unquote alternative club spaces to really kind of show themselves and have the ability to attract a general audience or have the ability to put their events on in general places and not just always be confined to flipping underground warehouse spaces and stuff especially in london we have kind of sex positive parties in some of the biggest clubs in here and clearly there's an appetite for it and clearly there's a desire for it and clearly the people that run these spaces get it and they want to welcome those people into their flipping clubs it makes complete sense it's all good i love that still got a long way to go but i love it. when it comes to the burkheim being run by cis white dudes i don't necessarily think that's a problem i think personally for me um there might have been an issue prior years where there was a particular type of dj playing there maybe they did only book maybe a certain caliber of person i think since the pandemic i feel like they've made effort maybe it's because of you know convenience especially with brexit and especially with the pandemic there wasn't maybe a f easier way to get people to come over and play so they had to tap into their local scene and local community but i feel like now on any given weekend in a burkheim you're going to get a far better representation of a diverse scene and what maybe the musical tapestry of dance music is all about by seeing who plays every weekend it's far more reflective of the scene in general it's not just basically the biggest mixed mag person playing alongside a couple of people that you don't know no it's absolutely a very sort of group of people from residents to friends and family to somebody that's a local hero that are playing there on a weekly basis and it's really done well and again for the biggest club in the world to do that because they're the industry standard they're the ones everyone's following everyone copies i think they do a good job could they be doing a better job for sure but for what they are the level that they're at and what they're kind of operating at and the fact that they have to run that business essentially like a machine every week it just kind of keeps chugging along and doing the damn thing i think they're doing pretty well all things considered and then i think the other part of it to mention also is that unfortunately i'm not sure if it's just a dj thing it must be a dj thing i just don't think you can insert or sprinkle in some of this woke um ideologically possessed stuff into djing and into dance music industry it just doesn't work in my opinion because i think the kind of the audience sort of dictates what becomes successful that the punters always do that no matter how much the industry tries to shut people down our throats or tries to tell us this person is the next big thing we generally decide what we like and what we want and there's an issue here in london at the moment where some of the queer spaces some of the queer club nights some of the gay club nights the lgbtq friendly club nights are complaining that they're getting too many straight people coming to their party think about that putting on parties that are so fun are so amazing they have such a fresh outlook on dance music such a fresh approach to booking that all the straights are now coming over to their club spaces infiltrating their spaces and they're not liking it they're complaining about it that's the position that we're in now in london there's a real friction and a battle between people from that community feeling like the straights are coming in and taking over and watering down or making the, their spaces not as safe as probably they would be if it was just them that's the place we're in at the moment so clearly things have advanced in my opinion they've gone a real long way but when it comes to music and djing and stuff in general you can't do all that identity politics stuff because i feel like if you want to be represented you just put on your own party that's all you do and i think all of the parties so far in london that are doing great the body hammers the infernos budokais they're all just been started by people just being like you know what enough this stuff isn't representing me i'm gonna do my own thing then it kind of catches up with the normie crowd myself included and now suddenly i'm there dancing and having a good time but not knowing that these guys have been doing this for ages before i even arrived there now the other point i was going to make that i thought was really maybe a bit left field here i think ra also played a slight role in the scene at the moment and how it is because i feel like when they had the dj polls back in the day or when there was more of a community and you could actually leave comments on post and share information and talk to people from around the world about your love of dance music about nightlife and all that malarkey i feel like a lot of local people were promoted a lot of local people were recommended or people that you maybe have never heard of who aren't local but just doing their damn thing and just kind of you know keeping themselves to themselves and not on social media with their hands splayed out wide trying to get all the attention and one of the good examples of this was a ra dj poll 
that RA DJ poll back in the day was for me an opportunity to not only see who was you know going up or down on the list because that was always cool to check out but the major thing about it was always the comments you scroll right down to the bottom of that page and you read the comments and there'll be people arguing about oh that person has no business being number five how could my guy or my girl that I like be number 10 or whatever it may be and then sometimes there'd be active conversation around hey if you like DJ Tennis listen to this person hey if you're a fan of Solomon listen to this girl like there'd be those kind of recommendations so then you'd find out about people who maybe you wouldn't have known about unless you read the comments and also i think like nowadays with the scene being as varied as it is now and i think i also get the feeling there's less of an appetite for like the big ticket djs now i feel like even though there's a new crop of them coming up like the dixons and stuff i can't be replacing some of the other older folks and even the likes of the guys that do kind of music they're literally like the new kind of generation of kind of superstar djs but for the most part it doesn't feel like everyone kind of wants the big glitzy name they kind of want to go to a fun party with a couple glitzy names but it's not all about the one one person it's all kind of spread out now would be the best time to have a dj to have an ra dj poll if you wanted to in the back end you could have it how i think they had it last time where it was only for events that you'd maybe clicked attending on i forgot how it worked or they'd only do it for a three-day period at the end of the year or something on those kind of lines but now if you had the tech and you had the wearable to do it you could put it into place where you could only vote on events that you actually purchased a ticket through ra events with like the ticket that they sell you know or whatever that you can set up on your thing and then they could also have a system where it would only show you the DJs that played on all those lineups. So then at the end of the year, a pop-up banner will come on the app and you'd select the DJ that you were impressive or that you felt was really cool or that you saw a lot of times and then that will get included in the poll. And then what end up happening is that you'd have a lot more, because what ended up happening on every RA poll, the top 10 or fi the top 50 were always the same kind of names that kind of interchanged. But the others outside of that, or maybe the others outside the top 20 were people that you may, may or may not have heard of who have played on their local scene who a lot of people saw in that area and that who kind of voted for and that will then go on to sort of democratize things and make things a little bit more spread out and even as a conclusion i don't think exclusivity deals would end if Bergheim did close I feel like Bergheim still plays a role I don't think it's the only place that you should be going to and kind of being obsessed with I feel like there should be way more variety there should be way more competition for it out there but I think unfortunately because there's not a lot of places in the world that have the attitude that Berlin seems to have or that has a relationship yeah it has the, that kind of response to nightlife the same way that berlin does it's difficult to have that place replicated in other places because some countries the uk being a good example they have a very adversarial relationship with drugs with alcohol the government doesn't like young people having fun so it's difficult to ever imagine a place like Berkheim ever existing in a, in a country like england and i'm sure it happens in other countries too so maybe that's why they basically are able to do what they want take their foot off the pedal if they want to or not and just kind of run the show how they feel like like it because there's no real competition and there never will be any real competition that's probably the whole point of it but i still feel like for what they do and the level they're operating at they're still up there they're still the best in my opinion if anything the mistakes that they make should serve as a cautionary tale for people that want to do their own thing it shouldn't be a thing of like oh let's get rid of them because they're making mistakes it should be oh if that club is making mistakes that's awesome what can i do in my position to correct those mistakes what can i do to maybe not repeat those errors that i've seen what can i do to maybe do things that i've not seen them do whatever it may be i think that can happen if people be a bit more objective and not be so emotional about these kind of things in general in my opinion and also the final final point on it djing is hard enough as it is it really is difficult from what I've seen and my brief experience and my kind of, you know, just fandom of it in general. It's very hard to make it. It's very hard to become a professional who's suddenly paying their bills from going out and playing at flipping all these great play clubs and places and festivals and stuff. It's not easy. And no one path is the same everyone's different so then to include stipulations like having people play because of their race color creed or sexual orientation it just unnecessarily muddies the waters it makes it it makes an already hard occupation even harder to succeed in because now you're just what giving people a chance because they happen to be from this community or for they happen to be this race it just doesn't make any complete sense in my opinion and also it doesn't serve anybody in the long term because you want people to play at that level who are good at playing in front of people you don't want people just to be there because of what they identify it just doesn't make any sense really because usually you can fool a customer maybe once to get them to give someone like that a chance but after that one time if they're not good they're never going to come back again so essentially you end up shooting yourself in the foot but again what do i know <laughs>